Greetings with political excellence and good governance. This is Noemi Paula Pardo and my speech is all about a government of laws and not of men. When I first started out to decipher that I made my mind to enter law school, that if someone told me down the track that I would be taking proceedings against Philippine government, I would have found the thought terrifying and hard to believe as well. Back then, I knew only one side of the story. I thought the law was about the government making it, enforcing it, and the rest of us following it. Then, I happened to hear my colleagues say to local Filipinos, Justice is justice or enduring because of the interminable bureaucratic procedures and delays. As a result, tens of thousands of people are imprisoned in appalling circumstances. The Philippine court system is in state of disarray. The answer to this problem is as straightforward as Adam Smith admonition to us. Establish a government of law and not of people. As a group, Filipinos believe that the country's problems emanate from a dysfunctional judiciary. They are seen to be corrupt. As a result, there is a widely held opinion that the legal system is corrupt. Everyone is subject to the law and no one is exempt. In today's legal system, the principle that no one is above the law is at its core and is at the heart of the rule of law, even though it sounds like a movie line. In other words, what does the rule of law entail? Even the most prestigious government leaders and politicians in a democracy are subject to the same rules as the rest of the populace. A pretty fine, open, and transparent procedure also implies that laws are not made at the will of society's most powerful individuals. Aristotle remarked that it is more fitting that law governs than any one of the people. On the same basis, if it is expedient to establish the ultimate authority in certain individual men, they should be selected solely guardians and the slaves of the law. He argued that a limited power is unnatural and bad because those who wield it are more inclined to misuse it by denying others their basic rights. Those in authority are influenced by passion. In other words, law is the absence of desire. This is known as the rule of law and the founders of the United States were aware of its importance in a democratic society. To the end, it may be government of laws and not of persons. John Adams said in Massachusetts Constitution defining his goal. The expression governments of laws, not of persons was coined by John Adams. This implies that in a free society, the laws of governance must be established and well defined. Ordinary folks may not be able to exercise their fundamental rights because laws are too cumbersome. The rules of the government can be more made or modified at will. You can imagine living in a culture where you may be pulled over and arrested for no other reason than the color of your automobile as you drive down the street safe and sound. Your automobile gets a fresh coat of paint after you get out of prison and a different police officer doesn't like it so you are pulled over and jailed again. Imagine the possibilities. What it's like to live in a country where a high-ranking government shoots and murders an innocent person for no clear reason in front of multiple eyewitnesses despite the fact that the government has a strict prohibition on murder? Imagine what it would be like if you live in a culture where the government may remove your house, children, or bank account at any time without notice and without requiring a specific process it's hard not to feel vulnerable. Without a set of established rules, laws can be enforced in a way that is predictable and established. A society's rules must be created and enforced using objective criteria under the rule of law. In our daily lives, we frequently complain about having to obey regulations. While society's regulations are often seen as excessively limiting and inflexible, lacking the ability to accommodate our unique situations and demands. As a conclusion, while the rules may be uncomfortable at times, 
they really serve to protect us from the inescapable discomfort that a society without a set of enforceable standards would always bring. These principles, although not flawless, serve as a safeguard for our liberties since they are based on objective standards. Because we are governed by the law, we are at least somewhat free from the tyranny of a despotic dictator in the rest of the world. However, let us not forget that we must be governed by the government of laws and not of men. As the Latin phrase suggests, dura lex sed lex. That is harsh, but it is the law.